Burgess and I'm Daniel, and I work at Burgoster, which is this uh, really cool startup in Sichuan, Lausanne. Olivier uh, Wednesday was here uh, talking about a little bit about, about our, our product. And I'll talk a little bit about the Node.js and our experience with there some distributed systems. Um, yes, the shameless plug is that I am a minion at Blockbuster, and you should all check out the web page because we do have some pretty cool things. So what do we do? We do automatic software testing, which means we take a web kit, have it modified, we instrument a JavaScript core even more, uh, we get the magic, and we have a bunch of servers, and I'm going to talk about servers. So what's the server? We have this, uh, in the beginning, one very monolithic, huge Node.js server. And it does a ton of things. It proxies uh, requests from several sources. It serves our clients, uh, 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 which is in Ember, Ember.js. It does all sorts of things. We talked to many APIs in the past. Now we're talking mostly of these ones. Um, we are heavily uh, Amazon-centric. Right now, so that's why we use SES for emails and stuff. So, yeah, it's a big, well, not huge. I don't, I don't have uh, data on how big Node.js applications are, are getting these days, but it's around 20k lines of code. code. It was actually worse before, it was, a, I think, 30k or something. And the NPM shrink wrap is almost 1k lines. So the shrink wrap is uh, when you want to freeze all your non modules dependencies, and dependencies of dependencies, they, they spread quite quickly. So, yeah, it's we consider it a, a nice application. So, the, the thing, our, our object, or my objective, because I work in the most of the server part, is to, to make this thing simpler. And we make it simpler by breaking things, which is for me a bit of a cognitive dissonance. Because it should make things even more complex, right? You have all these small things now to to worry about how they, they talk to each other. Yeah, so I just skip myself. So distributed applications, they are error prone. I mean I'm not going over the what everybody knows. They're error prone and they are hard, hard to get it right because there's so many ways I think of doing it wrong and so forth and so on. So what did I do? What did we do? We took something that really works, which is Dino, that everybody, I think, uh, is aware, it's a Substack uh, baby, and um, it works on streams. It's basically one, one stream, super simple, and that's why we use it, because it's robust, and it really works. <coughs> and we implemented what I call disservice, and yes, I cannot name things. Uh, so what it does is, it's a stream-based Dino, uh, it manages remote dependencies, I'll talk this soon. Um, it has the, all these nice words like self filling, load balance, and it will pick up new endpoints as they come up and as, as they go down. Uh, it, it will remove, it will retry. There's a ton of, of, of uh, magic in the code. And all of that because I like sugar, I really like sugar. I, I like to just sit down and, and worry about the business logic. I don't, I, I'm, I'm done with trying to redo everything again and again in the most complicated way. So we got this, lay, this layer on top of uh, Dino. And yeah. Just going back to like how I can't change things. I cannot even name things manually, like the service order. It's kind of a crappy name. So naming things is, is really annoying. And you have a rover in Mars, and you're still trying to name stuff. Like object, object naming is unbelievably uh, annoying to get it right, apparently. So this has been going on since uh, 97. Uh, I think the first RFC for, for naming things is from around 97. That's when radius was <laughs> proposed, uh, the authentication code. So we have MDNS, DNS SD, uh, SDB, which is Microsoft, and then we have uh, which everybody knows. Uh, and we have SLP, which is this thing from 97 actually, which is actually very nice. You have attributes, you, you have uh, a multicast, um, uh, uh, unicast. If it, it's a really broad and uh, encompassing uh, implementation specification, but nobody uses, of course. Um, 
and even DHCP has something for naming <laughs> objects. It's just unbelievable. So we end up um, picking MDNS. Why? Because it was there, ready, and it just worked. And I work, this work is in quotes. Uh, MDNS uh, on, on, on an Apple machine will use the Bonjour implementation and it will work flawlessly. But on a Linux machine, it will use the Avahi uh, implementation. And, and there is this libcompat uh, MDNS on top of Avahi. And that's a, it's a very messy piece of code. I don't know if anyone here had experience with MDNS. There is a node module which we use called MDNS. Uh, it's, it's super simple to, to use it. You just register um, something. You give it a, a name. You can uh, browse it later. And it will find uh, using multicast on, on a specific IP. Um, the thing about MDNS, and because it uses this libcompat, is that you get lots of error unknowns. Now, <laughs> I don't know about this error unknown thing, like who, who came up. But it should be very f rare that you get an error unknown. I mean, may maybe something like a cosmic ray flipping a bit, then it might be an error unknown. But in MDNS case, because of libcompat, you get tons of error unknowns. Like if the pthread fails, or memory alloca allocation fails, or some other Avahi-related error happens, it bubbles up to, to us, to the Node.js implementation, as an error unknown. So we are moving away from, from this, because we have this in production, by the way. This, this, all this I'm talking here, we have uh, running on, on Amazon or, or on uh, virtual appliances. Uh, and we, what I'm going to do is eventually um, implement multiple engines, a bit like Socket IO uh, has this uh, downgrade, or Engine IO has this upgrade procedure of trying one uh, engine and going up, trying different ones. Uh, this is my, my current goal. So a bit of an example. So because, because of timing, I don't know if there will be time for, for a demo. I think it maybe. Uh, I, the thing commented out is, is the, that's the uh, example taken straight from the node website. And I just commented out the differences, which is uh, to require um, and how you create it. So I give it this, whoop, this name here called D1. And it's the same function. And instead of picking up a port, I uh, just do a start. And this will pick up automatically a port. It will use the uh, uh, whatever uh, announcement, uh, advertisement engine, in this case, MDNS. It will broadcast the port uh, to anyone interested in this, uh, in this service. This service ha has no uh, versioning. So whenever you search for it, it will just uh, find. But there is a versioning um, support. So this is, a no this is not uh, <laughs> rocket science by far. Um, there are other projects. Uh, in fact, this, this thing has uh, been working for a couple of months now. There was another project called Hook.io uh, by Marak, I think. Um, it does, it, this thing has se several like, similarities with that, but it's not the same. The, and because Hook.io seemed to, to, I don't know, to die down, I, I didn't really uh, see that much activity, or I, I chose to implement this even simpler uh, um, object registration uh, for streams. So declare the, whoop, need the focus. You get the client. You just say, oh, uh, give me a service and find for me a D node uh, for that name, which is D1. And then you call as a, as a D node, really, seriously. It's, it's the same. You get the same objects back. Uh, nothing, nothing seriously different. Oop. But this, only, only this server is boring, right? It's not doing much. Uh, what I want is um, remote dependencies. Why? Because uh, looking back at our, our problems, uh, a request in, usually involves talking to several APIs, several external things. Uh, oh, go to check this mixed panel thing and go to the database and um, you know, s many external uh, uh, um, tools and APIs to interface with. And all of them, they have errors and uh, we found out through <laughs> painful uh, 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 moments that Error handling is really not that simple and easy when you're talking to these multiple sources. You have timeouts everywhere. You have uh, all sorts of things. And the code gets uglier and bulkier. So what 
what I want is like I want dependencies. I want automatic dependencies on these small services. See if, and I want two types: a hard and a soft dependency. A hard dependency is if one service goes down, I want the whoever is depending on that to go down as well. And a soft is well, it's not. It's just it can continue. So of course, it's up to the programmer to 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 gauge uh, what is a soft dependency, what is a hard dependency. Um, but yeah, so this is how you implement a, a second serv service called D2. And it has a different function instead of it exports this JS conf here. And the only difference is it has this uh, server dot rely on D1. And this is a hard dependency. So D2 goes up. Uh, whenever D1 goes up, this guy is notified and it also goes up. If D1 goes down. If there are no, no other D1s in the uh, vicinity, this guy will go down as well. And yeah, that's, this is the type of sugar that I, that I like. I don't have to really worry about like uh, implementing custom event handlers and checking uh, this, these things. And of course, again, there's like a t timeout uh, uh, handling, retries, the load balancing. Uh, it will try different endpoints according to retry. There's a couple of metrics. Sorry. Yeah. So what is the work in progress uh, is uh, cycle detection, which is fairly simple. Um, multi there's multiple engines in, in cases the advertisement this advertising agents uh, agents uh, engines SLP is the one I'm coding now I started uh, uh, two days ago uh, there's a, a library called open SLP and it implements the the, the, the new the latest RFC for SLP and that should be done soon actually if anyone wants to to help I, I would really like that would really appreciate it and uh, it's a C++ uh, native module uh, and this thing is, <laughs> which is a hack, is I want to in, just to add this small remote dependency in the package JSON and basically have this to, to be uh, that rely. So uh, I can code small uh, uh, NPM modules and have in the package JSON their remote dependency. So I can just launch uh, that NPM module and um, have a D service to, to automatically already do the rely the registration. So it'll be even simpler, it's like just more sugar, but uh, yeah, even simpler to, to manage. So I have these extra, I don't know if I have time. Maybe I won't have time. So um, this is the, the, the stream part, the denote the stream based. Uh, but streams are not the, the end all, they don't cure all uh, illness. Like streams are composable, they're really cool. But there is one thing that we like, which is a repeat operations and uh, it's it's at some point you will buffer things uh, because you have to repeat so of course you could do the absurd which is uh, oh, an operation failed retry then operation failed retry retry until you get to the end user and you get an alert to him like oh just press of submit on the form again but that's not really nice. So at some point in your, in your uh, pipeline, you will buffer something and retry later. Uh, this later is, uh, you know, could be in a millisecond or uh, seconds later. So transactions are kind of required. And we do have another implementation, which is all I call a pipeline, but I don't know if that's the correct name, uh, which is basically a chain of operation steps. And these steps are uh, funny, uh, funny no, <laughs> fancy word, idempotent. So you, you must be sure that you can call that thing uh, multiple times and it will give you the same uh, uh, answer. And what it does is you will, you will serialize your common, some call. Uh, you will have one input and one working queue per, per step. So you implement a small, a small function that is process something. And this working queue is what guarantees you that you can uh, retry operations safely. So we use right now Redis, but there's also a, a Castrell and a Darner, um, Darner um, implementation, which is just a fast, faster Castrell in C++. And what, it, what you have is uh, you have this working queue, atomic operations. So you, even if you fail, if you time out or whatever, you can completely kill the, the service, put it back up, and it will automatically do the recovery for you given that your step is idempotent, so it's, it's uh, not a problem. And we have this in production as well. It's, it's really yeah, simple. I, I won't have time. It's too short. I'm sorry. So everything will be uh, open source. I got um, the approval from, from the overlords. And yeah, I thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you.